lose all sense of reality and enter another world. Remember, do not underestimate the power of PlayStation. PlayStation. Beyond. 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 Say it louder, Vince. Beyond. Thank this you. This is why you're not a real member. Beyond. <laughs> Oh my god, no, I got that at that one. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Kyle Moriarty. This is Podcast Beyond episode, what, what are we at? 322? Three, two, three, no, 324. Three, two, three, three, so we're not, this is not episode 322, this is episode 324. And I don't even know why I'm hosting it. Wait, I do know why I'm hosting it, Greg. It's because we're going to go over the game of the year voting for PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4. Or four. Yeah. Not poor. No. And poor. PlayStation Vita. <laughs> it's not as easy as you always make it seem, huh? No, no. You're always making fun of me. No, I, well, I'm still going to make fun of you. I'm here with Greg, and Vince is taking the, the place of uh, Andrew Goldfarb, who is away doing whatever it is he's doing this week. Right, news, up? eating soup. <laughs> yep, in that order. Uh, but Greg, I thought it would be fun to do kind of a video podcast, a special video podcast, because every podcast, to be honest, is a video, but right. we, we, we're going to heavily, we're going to have the video guys kind of heavily edit this one a little sure. bit. Sure. We if have, you, if uh, you watch the normal garbage podcast mm-hmm. beyond video with no B-roll and just one camera, which going, he edits, get off, get off of that stuff. You, this yeah. is the one. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're listening to MP3 right now, but if you're not, you're watching the video. This video is going to be right. top notch. B-roll and everything. It's going to be. We great. got that B-roll. It's yeah. going to be great. So I'm hitting. I'm sitting here cross-legged with my MacBook. My MacBook Pro. You look right? very classy. Thank yeah. you. I'm feeling so you can do the thing with your leg where you can like actually swing it over and let it rest. Yes. I've never been able to do it. I, Why? I, I is do it because your forward. thighs are too fat or I your think balls it's, are too it's, it's, it's probably the thighs. The, it's definitely the thighs. Okay. <laughs> well, let me, let me, I've never actually tried that. I don't even know what that... Nope. See, <laughs> see it's usually it's the, usually nope. the long, lanky guy legs that can do it. There was this guy in, in uh, high school, Sean Farrell. He went on to play basketball at uh, the DePaul University, but he could do it no problem. He would lean way back. Well, that's a go. good that's a good story, Greg. Yeah. I'm kind of jealous of people. Hey, you know who what? Do I'm, that. Just because we're in the studio, I'm not going to let podcasts be on get hijacked into being on topic. <laughs> uh, so, so Greg, uh, Greg yeah. and Vince, we have three platforms, three PlayStation platforms. Mm-hmm. Podcast right. Beyond is the number one PlayStation podcast in the entire world. So I figured we'd talk about PS4, PS3, and Vita, mm-hmm. and s- how we voted in some of these different categories, and how we thought the winners shake down if we voted differently. And right. Game of, that. of the thought, Year awards are right. up now. Everybody can go see them on IGN.com. Right. But mm-hmm. we want to talk about how we got to the winners we got to. Right. Exactly. And I, I thought, you know. It'll be fun. We, you know, a lot, every, other people voted, but we voted on all this stuff as we play a lot of PlayStation right, games. Sure. So, like, while we might have uh, not cast a ballot for, say, PC sports game, right? I did or, not. Uh, I X- voted SimCity <laughs> down the ballot. That, 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 <laughs> the SimCity down ballot. Uh, so, where where should we begin? Should we begin with PS4, PS3, or Vita, Greg? I say you, you do PS3. PS3. Let's go there, and then we'll put a, we'll have a Vita sandwich. Is what we'll call it. <laughs> okay. So we let's start with best action game. Sure. We have here's the nominees: Grand Theft mm-hmm. Auto Five, mm-hmm. Splinter Cell, mm-hmm. Blacklist, DMC, Devil May Cry, God of War, Ascension, and Metal Gear Solid: Revengeance. Right. Grand Theft Auto Five won this one. Right. So how do we feel about this? Are we feeling good That's about this? That's how I voted. That is my, my I checked that box there. I punched that ticket. So the thing about it is this, and this is something we came up with a lot during our our Game of the Year deliberations this year is. So what is Grand Theft Auto V, right? I mean, right. it's an action game because it's very action-heavy, sure. Right. But there's, it's an open world, there's adventure sure. elements, there's, you can even make the argument that there's RPG elements. So it's like, how do you categorize this? It's tough. Like, it ultimately, we came down on Grand Theft Auto V should sit in the action genre. But, you know, when you look at, say, Revengeance, you look at Devil May Cry, those are games that I think fit more of, like, the, the archetypal mold of what an action game is. So, um, I mean, for, for that, I had to go with, for me, I went with DMC because... Yeah. I think it's, uh, in terms of just action mechanics, I think it's a much stronger game than Grand Theft Auto V. Like, Grand Theft Auto V is, is, has a lot of action and a lot of different ranges of action, but when you come down to like the shooting and the core, the core action elements versus other action games, I didn't find them to be extraordinary. They were just, um, they facilitated me having this bigger adventure right. in this like, open world. But mm-hmm. you know, I didn't find myself, I wasn't losing sleep over like, how could I do a better combo you're, in Grand Theft Auto V. Right? In your bed, your sheets were all messed yeah, up. Exactly, yeah. and I'm all tangled, and I can't move my legs, and I'm falling out of, you know, out of bed, and, and I'm like, oh my god, I gotta try this new combo in Devil May Cry. But I, I didn't, to me, that's how I mark a great action game, is how much the combat system just gets in my brain and makes me like, want to try new things. And sure. you know, Grand Theft Auto V doesn't necessarily do that for me. Yeah, so. I mean, that's the problem we are, where we are right now with the fact that every genre bleeds into the other genre. Right, yep. right? You know what I mean? Sure. Like, I wouldn't call Grand Theft Auto an RPG, but there's definitely, like you're saying, RPG right. elements to it. And for me, I think it's, once we, you know, get down to what genre is this game, which is listed on IGN from the get-go. As soon mm. as the game's out there and asked, we have a little tag for what it is. Yep. And then you get down to this category. Once it's in the category, it's fair game, and it's pretty much, for me, like, 
Where was the most fun? Like the action games you're describing, I hate. Right, I, yeah. I hate <laughs> that stuff when it's like, oh, like, oh, I didn't do the combo. Like, you know, no, like, no. Metal Gear Revengeance <laughs> and Devil May Cry. Yeah, right? both like, of the them. story was never like that awesome for me, right? Right. Like, it's I clearly agree. about, like, when Clements was here, he talked about DMC, right? And it was just like, this is awesome because you get to do these combos. You get to do right. this. It's, it's like, about you know, mechanics. Like, right, right, right. And to me, that's the thing. Like, when I think of an action game, I'm like, I'm only interested in mechanics. Like, story. Couldn't care less. I'm like, yeah, do I pay attention? Sure. But to sure. me, like, I mean, we all come from this era to a degree also where, like, story was just like, well, it's there in the background. You or have a reason force. to go kill right. everything. Right, and yeah, that was yeah, all yeah. it was when we were growing yeah, up, yeah. you know. So now it's harder to justify that kind of a story when visuals look so realistic. So sure. we kind of have to have a story. But still, when I come at an action game, I come at to it. I come to it from, like, 1986, like eight year old Vince, Vin. The <laughs> genres, they're bleeding into each other. You gotta evolve. They're evolving, son. I refuse to oh evolve, my God. Greg. <laughs> this is the start of Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Life finds a way, Greg. Life uh, finds a way. I didn't vote in the toads. I, I didn't vote. Uh, yes, I didn't vote in this uh, category because I didn't play enough of the games. Okay, mm. uh, but I'll take your word for it. Okay. Uh, GTA Five didn't really resonate with me. It's a great game, but it didn't right. really resonate with me at all. It's uh, surprising. Yeah, it is. Surprising. You were super stoked for it. Yeah, it was. It's it was. A very much a, a Skyrim situation with you. Yeah, it's just like where I'm just like I don't know. It's not what I want right yeah, now. I think yeah. I want it. I think I want it. Yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> uh, best action adventure game. So we severed the the action games away from the act, more action adventure games. Yes. And so I think we kind of defined this nebulous term as uh, you know you're adventuring, not in the PC point and click right. term, no, but no, like no, no. like you're having an adventure. It's more story and character driven. Uh, so the 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 nominees were The Last of Us, Tomb Raider, and Assassin's Creed Four: Black Flag. And the winner of that obviously is The Last of Us, which I think is right. Is gonna as you're gonna see win a lot of categories. And if, yeah. it, if it pops up in a category, it went. Yeah, it. I think it's the only game I was looking at. I think it's the only game this year that won that was nominated for more than one category. Yeah. that won every category right, that, right, it, right, that right, it was right. nominated in. Um, so I, I want to just touch on a few of these. We won't spend too much time on them, but you were probably the only one that voted on this amongst the three of us. Is best fighting game for PS3. Right. Uh, the nominees were Injustice, Gods Among Us, Dive Kick, Dark Stalkers, Resurrection, and Naruto Shippuden. Ultimate Ninja Storm 3. Uh, Injustice 1, I know you've voted for Injustice, right? You quite Yeah, absolutely. Game, so just tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't want to say it was... It, it was kind of a transitional year, I think, for the for the genre. Um, and it just turned out that the only big budget, like, major, with, like, a lot of driving development force behind it, fighting game that came out was, was Injustice. There were other, like you put on there, there were smaller ones that were still good in their own right. But I feel like for Game of the Year, it's not just about whose mechanics are good. Because I think all those games' mechanics uh, on that list... Arguably, except maybe for Naruto Shippuden, um, which is fine for what it is, yeah. but just not as sophisticated as the other games are. But I think all the rest of them, um, even the simpl- even with the simplicity of Dive Kick, I think all of them mechanically are interesting as fighting games. So once you once you've decided, hey, they all pass on that level, you kind of have to look at the greater picture of what they do. And just like Nether Realms did with um, with Mortal Kombat, it's a more ambitious undertaking. There's a huge story, there's tons of single player content to unlock, the online multiplayer is fully functioning with you know lobbies and you can make wagers when you're in a lobby. They've got, they've got all these things to the, to the online experience to try to make it um, just more fully featured and developed. So I feel like if all things being considered equal, if the mechanics are all great, then you have to go with what's got the most well-produced visuals, what's also got all the feature sets, and honestly the only, the only game with that much density, only fighting game with that much density to come out on PS3 was was injustice. So for the action category, you're only looking at action, screw everything else. Yeah. For fighting, fighting, and then everything else. Okay, He's no, a no. hypocrite, ladies no, and gentlemen. No, I'm not a hypocrite. Get out of here! No, 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 no. Where's Goldfarb? No, f- that guy. Oh, well, um, you can say that, that's okay. Cool, awesome. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rook here, so I don't know what's, what's okay. I don't want to, you know, upset the mommies and the A rook's daddies, a very no. powerful piece on the chessboard. Uh, sure, as, is a, as is a pawn. But I'm nobody's pawn, Colin. That's correct. Nobody's pawn. On Passan, as they In say. Harry Potter, on they Passan, play chess yeah. with big pieces. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Back to Vince. And <laughs> 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 no, but I mean, to, to your point, though, what, yeah. you're, what you're saying, like, I would say that if all other things were considered equal mechanically in that genre, in, in the action genre, then yeah, I would have to go to the other things. But to me, like, You're, Devil May Cry... To you, it's basically, apples and oranges almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, to yeah. me, Devil May Cry and, and, and Metal Gear Rising were the only two that were fighting each other in my head. Because sure, to me, that's sure, the first... Sure, sure, sure. sure, the first thing is mechanics. But like I said, all the other things being considered equal, if I think those two games are equal in mechanics, then it's going to be whatever right. I think is more fully featured. And I do think the story in, say, Devil May Cry, as like out there as it is, I think it is kind of more interesting and digestible than the one in Metal Gear Rising. That's my personal yeah, sure, opinion. Yeah, 100% on that. But, um, uh, 
So we're going to skip a few other categories on PS3 because I just don't feel like talking about them. We're getting the good stuff. Okay. Like racing. We have, all, we, have all this, we have all this hamburger. We want the filet mignon. Yeah. So this is a really... this Best role-playing game on PS3. Now, I think this is a very, very strong list of games. It was a great year. For uh, yeah, it was. Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, Dragon's Crown, Disgaea D2, A Brighter Darkness, Tales of Exilia, and Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. Uh, Nino Kuni won. I think mm-hmm. it absolutely deserves. But all 100%. of those games um, are great games worthy of playing. I would recommend those to any RPG fan. All yeah. of them. Depending on what you're looking for. Obviously, right. Final Fantasy XIV is an MMO. Sure, sure. And Tales of Exilia is a very kind of old school JRPG. Dragon's Crown is an action RPG. Mm-hmm. This guy is a strategy RPG. So there's actually yeah. a quite a bit of diversity What's in this awesome list as about well. that category, yeah, yeah, is that there's something for everybody. Right. right? Every if you subset. Don't want that, if you don't want that super hardcore JRPG, Dragon's Crown's awesome. So jump in and play and have fun and get your friends involved and whatever. For sure. And I, I think, you know, Nino Kuni winning the category, I think, is is awesome. Nino Kuni was a step above most games this year. I, I wrote my list, my own personal top 10 list, which you find on my blog on IGN. And Nino, you know, my top three were The Last of Us, Rezogun, and, and, you know, Nino Kuni. I actually think Nino Kuni was number two. And Nino Kuni is just such an extraordinary game. I think a lot of people forgot about it because it came out in January very early. I actually had beaten it in December. So for yeah. like in my own memory, it's like not even a 2013 game really. And I had to readily identify and get people to play this game and pay attention to this yeah. game because it's a PS3 RPG. So it's like this, it's in this corner. Um, but it did really well. It sold really well. I wouldn't be terribly surprised if we got a sequel based on how it did in the West. And we can hope. <laughs> um, like it didn't do well in Japan, which is like really weird and funny. But it did really well in the West. Even on the 3DS, it didn't. On the, on the DS, rather, it didn't do well. No, neither version did like extraordinarily well. Wow. W- not well. I mean, the the DS version was didn't do well enough for them to even port it. Now, that a lot of that had to do with the, it came with like a book and all this. Sh- yeah, that have kids don't want books. But hey, but, but I want to give video. props. Who to reads? Me. Come on. <laughs> Props to Nino Kuni before we move on, because that, that's just such an extraordinary game. It really is one of probably Beautiful. top ten games of Beautiful the generation game. for me. Nino Kuni is one of those games. Every year, there's like one or two games where you're like spiritually, I want to vote for this, but you know, only in its own category does it really. Can you really let it happen? Like I wanted, I wanted to make Nino Kuni my game of the year. I wanted to want to do that. Yeah. But every time I tried to, I was just like... You remember that Peggle 2? I remember... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Clearly. No, but it's like... with a lot, some, Something as good as The Last of Us out there, it's just... It's great for us to have that game in the pool because it's an amazing game and it pushes gaming forward, yeah. but... It also sucks because like there's so many other yeah, games that I, I so wish it awesome overshadows so year. much. I mean, when you get down, this is why I hate Game of the Year. And Colin <laughs> knows I hate top 25s because once we get to that point, we're inevitably ranking things we think are worth your time. You yeah, know what I mean, like anything right. on a top 25 list is worth your time, mm-hmm. and it sucks that one has we have to especially number one, especially that deep in the generation. Right, 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 right. right. I agree. The Vita, the Vita top twenty five was not nearly as contentious as the PS three one because we're basically it's basically done. I mean, we're going to probably do it one more time, and. That list will be set, and then everything on there is going to be yeah, probably nine pluses and like excellent games. So, mm. um, best shooter on PS3. The nominees were Bioshock Infinite, Metro: Last Light, Crisis Three, Battlefield Four, and Call of Duty: Ghosts. Uh, Bioshock Infinite won. Um, I think I voted for Bioshock as well. I might not have. I might have voted actually maybe even for Call of Duty. Um, but because it's a sh- you know we're talking about shooting mechanics, and this right. is what kind of got me with Bioshock, and okay. people you know hate me on Twitter for this. Bioshock. For a lot of reasons. Well, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's looks, a lot of reasons to hate it. I think I'm I think ugly. I'm, I don't you know know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you wear glasses, <laughs> yeah. earrings. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're pretty much a, a you just know, hate everything for hate, hatred. Hate me. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Hate me today in the words of uh, Blue <laughs> October. Uh, but but Bioshock Infinite didn't resonate with me. Like Bioshock, the original Bioshock is uh-huh. one of my favorite games. Like I, I absolutely adore, adore that yeah, game. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, Bioshock Infinite felt like such a shooter to me. Now, like when, like, it, like much more than the original Bioshock. Yeah. Now, when you reduce it to the mechanics, I don't think it felt mechanically that great. I think Call of Duty has much better mechanics than Bioshock. So, like, it was like one of those things where um, even Metro, which is a game I gave like a low seven to, uh-huh. um, it didn't it didn't feel the same to me. Like when we're talking about it just as a shooter, mm-hmm. Bioshock doesn't stack up to me. But obviously, I was you know I, I'm in the minority because Bioshock Infinite. Well, won. again, we're back to this action thing, right? Are we talking about sure. mechanics or what's around? I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, the, these bleeding genres. <laughs> that have, you know, I mean, that's the best part of where we are right now. Is that I, I like that it's hard to classify these games. And yeah, it's also interesting that once they're in, once it's in this category, it's all bets off, right? Like what yeah. what you're what, what you're pulling from that game is always going to be different person to person to person. Sure. I mean, taxonomy is becoming a, an increasingly tricky. Uh, Subject here, you know, as we try to, we try to be somewhat of a definitive, a definitive, you know, deciding force in how these games are, are classified. But of course, everyone's gonna, like you said, everyone walks away from 
different experiences with different things and sometimes you feel like the action part is what you took away from this. Sometimes it's the adventure part, sometimes it's the role playing elements that made it for you. Yeah. You know, so how do you define it? But the, also the interesting thing from here, here critically um, is that, you know, how do you judge an, a game once you've put it into that genre? Like, do you, do, like, like I was saying, do the core mechanics become the, the, the focus of end everything? All be all, yeah, yeah. The, the end all be all. What if, what if the game, like with Bioshock Infinite, I think like what Colin is getting at is that if you're looking at it as a shooter, maybe you could make the argument, and a lot of people did, that the shooting mechanics aren't really that strong. But if it has all these other things that other shooters don't have, right. does that make it a better shooter? Or does that just make it the best game in the shooter category? What's the distinction there? It's it's not easy. Yeah, no, it's yeah, not. Yeah. And and you know, we'll we'll just leave it on the note that Bioshock Infinite just emphasized its shooting too much and it ruined it kind of ruined the game for me. Like it just wasn't what I was looking for in a Bioshock game. Now I'm glad a lot of people and really a lot of people feel it. that way. Yeah. Like you're not a, you're not at all alone in feeling that way. A I lot just, of people I, feel I, that. I thought it was crazy when I first started playing that game. And I'm like, what is like what is this? Because I mean, this is not I liked like it. Bioshock. I had I liked Bioshock Infinite. I didn't like it. You know, to the level a lot of people around here did. But I enjoyed myself, you know what I mean? I didn't, but I didn't come in thinking it was going to be another Bioshock, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? I came in expecting another great story from Ken and the team or whatever, yeah. but not expecting it to be every bullet counts kind of thing. Where am I going to, you know what I mean? Like, that was the thing about the original Bioshock to me, is that that was much more a sur survival horror game, sure. right? Of like, I was in it for audio logs, then oh crap, a splicer. Whereas this one was totally yeah, it like... scared the shit out of me. I'm yeah. like, all right, now put down a freaking Metal George Washington. I'll throw some traps. Let's do this. You know yeah. what I mean? I was empowered in Bioshock Infinite. In Bioshock Infinite, I'm a badass running around killing everything. In the original Bioshock, it was very much cat and mouse. I got to stay back. Oh, God, it's a big daddy. What yeah, I was, I, was so I was so scared in the original Bioshock. Yeah. Like, when I went back to play, because I got the Platinum in Bioshock, very difficult Platinum to get. Um, that, it just brought back all those memories. I'm like, this game is just so good. Like, But... That's for another day. Yeah. Uh, let's skip down to uh, best multiplayer. I think let's this is a good it. list as well. The Last of Us, Grand Theft Auto V, Dragon's Crown, Diablo III, Battlefield IV. The Last of Us won, again, I think rightfully so, but I didn't vote in this category, I don't believe, because I only played The Last of Us and Dragon's Crown online. Uh, GTA V, I played it, but not online. So mm -hmm. how do you guys feel about The Last of Us winning? Because I think The Last of Us is actually very special online, and a lot of people are it really is. ignoring how good it is online. I totally agree. I, vote, I voted for The Last of Us uh, as well, even though I'm, I definitely love Battlefield, yeah. I'm definitely a big fan of, uh, of Battlefield and the Dragon's Crown and Diablo, you know, three. Those are both uh, couch co-op experiences sure. you know, that I love. So I voted for Last of Us as well, and I think this is something we talk about all the time, right? Where games get like when an Uncharted three comes around, right? It's like, oh, cool, it's more Uncharted. Oh, it's more Battlefield, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Last of Us not just as a new IP. I mean, it's doing something new in multiplayer, right? It's doing right. this weird story-based thing of how many days you survived and what's happening with your group and collecting all these different things. And I think that stands out when you're talking about what was the best in multiplayer experience of the year, what was the most memorable, right? That's how I, I always come in categories like that, right? It's like mm -hmm. what when you say, all right, now we're voting for what's the best anything, right? It's like what was fun, what stood out, what made an impact, right? And I think mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about when you talk about this. GTA Online's awesome, right? But of course marred by horrible problems at yeah, launch. Had a really rough different launch, issues yeah. and then Stuff that you we are all so excited for multiplayer heists and that wasn't there and I, correct me if I'm wrong still isn't there right isn't it uh, I haven't logged back in and that's the problem right and they put out yeah. so many little updates of beach bum content and these different things that great I'm glad you're supporting that uh, but I've moved on right like I'm I, I bugged out because I I'm there sure. to play the first few days weeks months right and then the other thing for me that's the difficult about multiplayer this is as we were talking about earlier like evolving and yeah. how things evolve over time multiplayer is one of those categories that I think has evolved. Uh, a lot to the point where, okay, so multiplayer used to just be a mode in our game and it was like add another player to the game that you were playing already or, you know, dumb it down to some kind of an arena mode. Multiplayer game design has gotten extraordinarily more advanced than that and more complex to the point where, you know, games like The Last of Us or like Assassin's Creed that have... Uh, survival mechanics, stealth mechanics, and their single player. Now, instead of just putting people in an arena and saying shoot each other, they're trying to carry over the things that make the single player unique and engaging right, right. into multiplayer. And that, from a design standpoint, is a very difficult problem to solve. Mm -hmm. And I think that studios who look to solve it and games that are looking to solve it, I feel like they just deserve a little bit more credit in terms of what multiplayer means. I mean, sure, you can take a game like, like this is something I contended with people about, like Super Mario, um, you know, Super Mario 3D World. You know, a lot of people really enjoyed the multiplayer, and I think that's great, but in my opinion, for the most part, what you've done is you've taken the single player, and you've added another player to it, and it becomes more fun, and there's a couple of little wrinkles to it, but that's not the same as designing a multiplayer game or designing really from the ground up a multiplayer mode, and I think that's what The Last of Us does really mm -hmm. well. It's not, just, it's not just taking the basic, basic core mechanic of shooting 
and having a lot of people do it against each other. It's really taking a creative approach to designing something that carries over ambiance, feel, and risk reward, and uh, the worth of resources and resource management from something that's sim single player into multiplayer. And it's such a crazy problem to solve. And the fact that they solved it as well as they did, I feel like definitely made it worth the attention. Right, I agree. And I'll just give you an interesting anecdote. I remember t talking to Greg about this when we, you know, we had The Last of Us early and we played it, and then I had to go online to play multiplayer. Uh -huh. Typically when we review games, we're very open and candid about this. Like when something's hidden about a game or we don't get a game early, we don't get access to a game, it's usually a bad sign because the developers are worried about it. Right. And they really were, Naughty Dog and Sony really were worried about The Last of Us Online, I think, yeah. because we didn't get access to it until like right before we were ready to really pen the review. This was like mm -hmm. the outstanding thing we had to play. And I remember going on and being like, awesome like what are you guys afraid of you know and then talking to the studio afterwards and talking to sony afterwards talking to our readers and gamers out there and everyone and being like this is this is awesome this is arguably just as good as the, the single player campaign uh -huh. in terms of capturing the essence of the game so i thought that's kind of funny that they 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 certainly did not understand what they had with the last one well, i think they able, i mean you you talked about that I remember i remember you left for something you're going out of town and so i got to play i had to play uh, multiplayer with other games journos at the time or whatever and i walked away from that initial thing just like this is boring this is a boring multiplayer mode you know because people weren't committed to it and they weren't running in squads and right. they you we all came in or i came at it and i think the people on my team definitely came at it as it's another multiplayer game sure. so it's running around collecting canes i was like this sucks this is stupid you know what i mean but then once it was out in the wild and people got their hands on it and started communicating and playing as teams and you got lost in it you come in you watch it like oh i get it I yeah see i was happening. that's that was really the big thing for me was like i don't like multiplayer games i don't like playing online i yeah. played on t in the last of us online for like 45 hours wow you know which is like yeah. an extraordinary amount of time yeah. for me to spend with anything yeah so I, we always have to move on but i'm like i'm not done i'm not done with this i love yeah, yeah. it and i really you know i got the trophies and i want to go back and get it anyway um let's see best ps3 graphics the Last of Us, Bioshock Infinite, Rayman Legends, Nino Cooney, and Puppeteer. Now you can make cases for all these games. I think the Last you can make of Us cases for every category. I think yeah. are the people, like I said, right. all these great games. The Last of Us won. I don't <laughs> yeah, think I don't think that's a surprise. No. The, the, how beautiful the Last of Us is. Nope. And if you read my history of Naughty Dog, what like you know in part four we talk about Uncharted, and what mm -hmm. they really talk about is the evolution from Drake's Fortune to Uncharted Three. And this game looks a lot like Uncharted Three. I mean, it's 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 better looking, but yeah. You know how they they talk they, their own words like everything in Uncharted one it looked like wax and dolls and like didn't look right and like there was like and then Uncharted two was this big step forward Uncharted three was kind of refining it yeah. and then the last of us was really it's almost unbelievable that's on a PS three like they say yeah. themselves like, I we still can't have believe trouble we, understanding it like they're like we can't believe it. this is the same hardware yeah that we made like Drake's fortune on we made the last of us on so mm -hmm. while these other games are beautiful I think you can make a case like Nino Cooney's uh, Studio Ghibli like very beautiful mm -hmm. art very anime style art Puppeteer's style is Beautiful. You can't really. I don't think you can really contest the last of us looking objectively better than any. Yeah, game. I don't think yeah, you yeah, can yeah. either. Yeah. Because and this is this is the, this is my thing about the the debate versus of like art direction versus tech. And I'm like, there's this common. This is this is romantic idea that oh, but the person the you know the the better looking art wise game is gonna look better in ten years. Yeah. And sure, that may be true. Like I, I totally get it. And I understand that there's an instinct to want to, like, like an underdog voting instinct to be like, hey, they may not have had as, as big of a budget or as like impressive of tech, but look what their imaginations came up sure. with. And that's great. But like people forget that just because like The Last of Us is amazing looking, not just because of the tech and how technically sound it is, like their art department did work, major work yeah. as well. Like, so I feel like you can't like really discount that. Right, I feel we're like, talking about game of the year, not game of the decade. Sure. You know what I mean? Or art of the decade or right. like that graphically. What made an impact or whatever, right? right? This game looks awesome, especially for the PlayStation 3, you know, this seven-year-old console. Well, I think it looks better than some PS4. I mean, very easily. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, they got every ounce of juice out of it. It's no wonder they want to use that engine on PS4 in some way because yeah. they spend so much time with it, you know, since Uncharted 2, mm -hmm. even when they cleaned it up. Yeah, but I just, I don't think that, uh, I, that's, that's like my like a pet peeve of mine. I, I don't, I totally acknowledge the artistic, you know, achievement that these kind of lower fi games are, but it's, it's terrible to assume that just because they had more tech that there isn't also, like, inspired art there. No, I, well. I agree. Well, because it's know? the same argument we talk about, like, the polygonal 
like age of N sixty four and later like PlayStation, PlayStation two, like those games just don't look as good anymore. Like right. Mario sixty four was a, a game changing game, but it looks like shit, frankly, today. Right. You know, but like a game like all Nintendo sixty all N sixty four games. Yeah, do, like it looks do. terrible. But yeah. like or even you know, Ocarina of Time looks bad, you know, but when you horrible. look at a game like Wind Waker, <laughs> you know, horrible. You know, like Wind horrible. Waker looks beautiful still, <laughs> yes, right? Absolutely. Or like Mega Man X on Super Nintendo looks yes, beautiful still. Like absolutely. Games yeah, so I, I'm totally with you on that. I totally I totally yeah. hear you on that. Uh, best PS3 sound. We had The Last of Us, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Bioshock Infinite, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Battlefield 4. The Last of Us won again. I think those vocal performances, not to mention the awesome ambient soundtrack, but that soundtrack. And the sound effects, yeah. but, but the, I feel like the that's vocal the one that gets performances. Under oh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, Troy Baker, Ashley Johnson, amazing, amazing performances. But yeah, for me, like, I talk about, I think, my write up, right? Like, for me, the, a big part of The Last of Us is the silence. When there isn't a music and no one's talking and you're walking around and it's just footfalls and it's like drizzle in the background and it's like the whole game is. I am focused on listening for the next threat. That's how mm-hmm. I identify what's going to kill me or what's happening. And so you're always waiting for that next monster to pop out of the closet, right? And right. so you're always walking around these corners like, is it now? Is it now? What's happening? Which, and, shh, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, but and the other thing about it too is that music, as much as I love music, and as much as music can have a very powerful impact on, you know, like an emotional like landscape of, of any piece of, of art or entertainment, it's always, especially in games which are all about immersion and interactivity, like, Music is always going to be like an external source, an external thing, right? Like right. there's no, the part of your brain that goes, I'm walking through this world and I'm in this world will never be able to reconcile itself with and now there's music playing right. because it's always going to come, it's always assumed in your brain from coming off screen. So that's why I think like the understated score was, yeah. you know, was perfect and they almost always reserved music for cutscenes, mm-hmm. which is when they've already taken interactivity away from you. And that's one of the smart things that I love that Last of Us does is that when it decides to take control away from you, it goes, okay, now we're going into film mode. That's when it starts laying in a lot of the music. For the most part, when you're walking around, there isn't any, and that's really smart because usually, especially in a world that that, 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 that is that detailed and immersive, music is always like, a, oh yeah, I'm, I'm in a video game, not in yeah, a yeah. world. So I think it's really smart. Um, before we get the game of the year for PS3, best story, uh, we have, let's see, The Last of Us, Bioshock Infinite, Nino Kuni, Assassin's Creed 4, and Grand Theft Auto 5. The Last of Us won again. Mm-hmm. Um, I think rightfully so. I would make a case that Nino Kuni could be uh, included in this. And the reason I say that is Nino Kuni, you know, tells a really, it, it almost feels like we were talking about archetypes before, like an almost archetypical mm-hmm. RPG story, but told in a very different way from a different perspective. And that's what I loved most about it was. It's about the death of this guy's, this kid's mom. Yes. Spoilers. You know? And you learn that in like know, the first I'm half well hour of the game. Uh, but, you know, it's about his, and like how he goes to this other world and goes through these RPG kind of tropes to like find out what happened to his mom and try to bring her back. Like, yeah. I loved how emotional that game was. And I think that's what sold the game to a lot of people was like, wow, this is really f-ing sad. Like, yeah, it's beautiful and colorful and, and it's, you know, you have, you know, old lantern nose and all that kind of stuff running <laughs> around. But, like, yeah. you know, that was so cool. Like, I loved, I, I loved that, like, kind of juxtaposition of it. I was, I was at Namco Global Gamers Day uh, the year, um, you know, in Vegas, the year that they showed the, the trailer, like, the story trailer for, uh, for Nino Kuni. And it showed that basically that whole opening, those first few cutscenes um, of uh, Oliver and how he dealt with losing his mother, yeah. and I was I was choked up by the end of it, and I was like, I don't know what kind of world he's gonna go through, and I don't really know much about Oliver. All I know is that I understand how like, like crestfallen and just completely lost with grief I would be if something happened to my mother, and like, what kid, and I thought about what would a kid do to bring his mother back, like who absolutely cannot comprehend, deal with, or understand the fact that she's gone. What would, they, what would that person do Pet Cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Straight guy. up. Um, yeah, I absolutely agree. That was a, it's a, Nino Kuni's a very special game. Yeah, it is. Um, overall best PS3 game. We have The Last of Us, Grand Theft Auto V, Bioshock Infinite, Nino Kuni, Tomb Raider. All familiar cast from these all of these categories. Right. The Last of Us won. I think The Last of Us won overwhelmingly. And spoiler, The Last of Us also won IGN's overall game of the year. Yeah. Interesting fact, it is, I believe, the fourth time or maybe fifth time that a PS3 exclusive has been nominated for game of the year and the third time that one has won. Mm. Ah. Um, Journey and Uncharted, Uncharted 2, 2 sure. Among Thieves were the other winners. So you guys are, I mean, we really need to talk about The Last of Us again. I think people get it. Yeah. All the other games on there, I mean, were the competitors. Mm-hmm. All I'll say is, like, I'll just reiterate like what I was saying before. 
there's game like Nino Cooney emotionally I was like oh, I want to vote for it but I can't do it right. with The Last of Us there. It's just not possible. Yeah, The Last of Us threw everything off for me, too. Because <laughs> Nino Kuni would have been my game of the year. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We uh, talk about this, I mean, yeah. overall, right? Like, I was, I beat the drum for Gone Home all the time on how amazing I think Gone Home is. But when it comes down to Gone Home, The Last of Us were the best game of the year. Yeah. The game that we'll look back and say, in 2013, it didn't get better than this game. It's Last of Us. The, I was, story, the, the, the story, the sound, the gameplay, it all merges into this mm-hmm. amazing product. No, that's where I was, too, for overall. Like, for PS3, my emotional, like, thing was, like, Oh, I want to give it to Nino Cooney for overall. It was Gone Home. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I want to yeah. give it to Gone Home so badly, but I just right. said sometimes you just the best is the best. Yep. And I think for the most of us, we, we for most of us, we looked at it and said yeah. one is clearly the best. Yeah, I mean, for, for the games that we as a group nominated, those ten games, I voted The Last of Us and then Gone Home and then Tear Away. But like my top five are you know not re- even related to those last two. Right. You know, or right, Gone Home right. is in there, but like not Tear Away because it's just I had a kind of a different feel on this year. Um, let's go to PS Vita. Cool. I think, Speaking of tear away, Vita yeah, away. Vita away. <laughs> now I think PS Vita had a, an exceptional year in 2013. Mm-hmm. I think I yep. think Vita had an awesome year. I think there's plenty of games to play for it. It's two years old now, and you know there's just an extraordinary amount of content on it. But we're not going to start with a very good category because we voted for be- <laughs> we voted for best PS Vita action game. And there are only two nominees because right. of the way other things fell. And it's, Batman, Arkham Origins, Blackgate, and Ratchet and Clank: Full Frontal Assault. Both I didn't, games. That, I didn't vote in this category because I don't think I played either of those. games. I played a little bit of Batman. I played a little bit of Ratchet at an event. Ratchet is apparently completely broken on Vita or not. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. Um, Batman, I was really disappointed in. So, yeah. like, I don't understand. Like, you know, th- this is like kind of not. You know, I mean, there was a line in the sand about Batman. There were p- definitely people who liked Batman a lot. And for yeah, I mean, like, I like Batman. Out of these choices, right? I voted Batman, but I, I was not compelled to finish Batman. You know what I mean? Me neither. I want them to just make a like. I want it to be more action oriented. Just embrace what you're trying to mimic. Right. Stop with the get like the camera turn gimmicks and stuff like that, and just make yourself a Castlevania game, mm-hmm. like with Batman. It would have been awesome. You yeah. know, like, no, that's too that's too easy. <laughs> um, best PS Vita fighting game, just real quick, because you, you you can speak to this too. I think you actually sure. reviewed all these games. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Injustice Gods Among Us, Dive Kick, Guilty Gear, XX Accent Core Plus R. Uh, I think that might be like the seventh Guilty Gear game on Vita. You handled that well. Thank you. You handled that well. Um, Yeah, and actually... Injustice 1. Yeah, Injustice 1, but I did not vote Injustice. Oh, really? I was was beating the drum for Guilty Gear, but I mean, like, that's such a super hardcore, you know, old school fighting game that I couldn't get anyone to care. (laughs) Like, really, like, I think it was... um, Again, I go back to... I start at mechanics. That's always, like, my approach with everything. I start at mechanics. And... Guilty Gear is the, it's just the deepest fighter on that list. Uh, every character plays so wildly differently and so many of them like have mechanics and, and ideas to how they play that just break the rules of how fighting games go. Yeah. And the art is just gorgeous. It holds up so well, uh, the, the 2D art. Um, and it looks amazing on that OLED screen. Uh, the only thing, I when I reviewed it, I, I, I had to bump it down a, you know, a notch or two for not having online functionality, yeah. which is why I didn't rate it higher in my in my actual numerical review. But as far as what I thought was the best like fighting game fighting game on the system, to me Guilty Gear is a is a classic and it's still, you know, with with the plus R update, it became even more balanced and uh, and more perfect than it is already in- was. Is Injustice still a worthy pick? Was it a Absolutely. No, no, Injustice port is, or Injustice was a great port of, yeah. a, of a game that I rated as great on Yeah, you already said was, you know, know best PS3 that, fighting game. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. um yeah, no. Apples and oranges kind of thing as far as what people want out of a fighting game. Absolutely, right. and I think like for the most part, you know, Injustice delivers what most modern fighting game fans or what maybe a casual fighting game fan who right. isn't necessarily that much into the genre wants to play a good fighting sure, game sure, sure, sure. will enjoy, uh, whereas Guilty Gear will probably seem incomprehensible at first to Super a lot of... Super nerdy fighting game. Yeah, gotcha. absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, the next category is Best PS Vita RPG. Now, this list is not as strong as the PS3s, but I still think it's actually pretty strong. And I think 2014's RPG list, now that PS Vita is already entering its PSP late stage, uh-huh. is going to be really good um, for this genre. But Dragon's Crown, Atelier Tatori Plus, East Memories of Celsida, and Soul Sacrifice are the Ooh, uh, are the nominees. Dragon's Crown won. Uh, I voted for Dragon's Crown, but I actually think you could make like I, Atelier is not really my cup of tea. I don't really like I don't like alchemy RPGs like that. Really, like you know, like very item based, very. And Totori is my favorite of the Ateliers. I've I've reviewed every Atelier game for IGN that that's come out in like the last couple of years. So like I, I, Totori has always been, in my opinion, the absolute hands down best one. Uh, but even that, I wouldn't I wouldn't you know I mean I'm not saying it's an unworthy, completely unworthy pick. I mean, we you know we nominated it obviously for a reason, but. Uh, I don't think it stands up to the best on that list. No, I agree. And then East was good. Uh, 
uh, people are really in love with that game, and I don't quite see it. Uh, yeah. I think the game is a little weird and obtuse sometimes. Um, but I, I enjoy it, and I recommend it. Because it, it, it is a good action RPG, and we need more of those mm-hmm. on the Vita. That reckoning gameplay. Yeah, yeah it's, kind <laughs> of like, it's kind of like, a, like I don't want to say a poor man's Amalur, but kind of is. I mean, like, it's kind of, you know... Action RPG ish, running around doing kind of doing shit for people, um, and then Soul Sacrifice was you know Monster Hunter clone. Greg and I talked about this earlier today actually that you know this was a game that had a lot of hype attached to it and a lot of promise attached to it. And mm-hmm. I don't think it quite lived up to it, but um, Soul Sacrifice is a fun game. But Dragon's Crown is by far the the best RPG best on package, the on, right? yeah yeah. It's just very it's a very very good game, and, no. and it's sold extraordinarily well. Like, I don't think anyone saw it's sold over eight hundred thousand copies. You know, like that's insane. For a, for a game that costs like only a few million dollars, by the way, to make. So, um, I think we will be seeing a sequel. Yeah, and I think while it does have a um, Dragon's Crown, also has a, a strong multiplayer component. I felt like just like Monster Hunter, you know, Soul Sacrifice's multiplayer was so important to it in a lot of ways that, and it, you it required so much of a I feel a time investment to really get something out of it. It's a game that I would. It's one of those games I'd almost rather see on a home console. Like mm-hmm. I, I'd love to see a home port of Soul Sacrifice where you would always have access to other right, players right. and where you'd have more time to sit down and really dig into it. Because when you really, I think if you do it that way, it stacks up against Dragon's Crown more favorably um, than it does on a on a portable. But on a portable, I mean, with Dragon's Crown, you can't beat just sitting down beating the crap out of stuff for like five, ten minutes and then kind of turning it off. It's just a perfect portable game. Right. Yeah. And uh, we'll see more of that in Japan anyway with Delta coming out this year. And we'll see more of it hopefully in the States because Studio Japan's working on Freedom Wars which is supposed to be like a, you know, balls out kind of like Monster Hunter clone that's supposed to be like excellent. We'll, we'll see Like we'll see how that pans out. Uh, best PSV to shooter. Now I'm not quite happy about how this panned out genre wise because it's this is one of those taxonomy ultra- problems yeah. that we were talking yeah, about. This yeah, this is yeah. a bleeding genre. <laughs> like Velocity Ultra versus Killzone Mercenary. Now Velocity, Ult- Velocity Ultra is by far the better game, and Velocity Ultra is like one of the best games of the year. Yeah, uh, but totally on, on any platform. But totally with you. Killzone Mercenary deserved a nod in some way. Now Velocity Ultra won, but it's not really a shooter in the way we identify shooters. No, it's because- a space shooter. Uh, yeah, like when a, you say shooter, you're expecting first person, right. but now we're talking about Or at least arcade. third person, yeah, but it's like... Shoot, shoot em up. Yeah. And that's the... Cool pro- teleporting mechanics. And that becomes the problem, right, is that there's no... Like, that's a genre that's so... I don't want to say it's old or dated, but I mean, it's been around for so long, and yet it's become so niche yeah. that there just aren't enough games in it to almost make its own category. But when a game's as excellent as Velocity Ultra is, and it is most certainly very excellent... Um, I just said very excellent. That's not really That's good okay. That's How okay. excellent is it, Vince? Um, most excellent. It's most excellent. Um, but yeah, so you run into a big, a big taxonomy problem there. Like that, 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 that is almost the equivalent. Like putting putting Velocity Ultra along with Killzone Mercenary is almost like like what you were saying before. If you made adventure game, if you made like action adventure the same as you know, PC game like point and click adventure, because right. the, the mechanics are that different. But you're lumping, you'd be lumping them in together, like. I would love it if we could find a better way to solve that problem. Yeah, me maybe. too. Uh, adventure means something in, in gaming, and it doesn't yeah. mean what we think it means anymore. Right, exactly. Uh, and the same thing, I think, is with Shooter. Same shooter, thing with Shooter. Just, yeah. yeah. Um, best PS Vita platformer, the nominees were Guacamelee, Stealth Inc., Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time, Thomas Was Alone, and Tearaway. These are five very, very good games. Excellent yes. games. Um, and Guacamelee won, I think, rightfully so. Again, uh, you would make, make a case probably for Stealth Inc. Very you much love so. Stealth I Inc. loved that game so deeply. Like it, it got it got under my skin in a way like a platformer hasn't in a really long time. And it's because the guys who make it, you know, Curve Studios, who I love, they're killing it on Vita. Like Explode them on. Like Explode them on, right? They made so many good and so many so much good stuff came from them. This year, uh, Proteus and Velocity Ultra and um, and Stealth Think and Thomas was alone. They do such a good job of, of imbuing all their games with atmosphere, not so much storytelling. Actually, Thomas was alone is a, is a kind of a story driven experience to a degree. Or did but, they start? Is that did they port that or did they make that? Yeah, most of those games are ports that yeah, they help. Okay, port. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. They, they were just a whoops. Okay, I didn't know they, is a, a native game. I don't yeah, know. Explodemon yeah, yeah. is definitely native. I don't know about that. Jeez, now you got me questioning myself. Um, but in any case, like I think that. What Stealth Think does amazingly is that it tells a story in a very subtle way, and it's not a story with plot twists or with, you know, any of those, or even characters or traditional things like that. It's just you get placed in a world, and everything about the way that world is designed makes you kind of wonder, what is going on here? What's happening? Who am I? What is my place in this world? And the ending just kind of answers it in a very subtle and very cynical, kind of dark, Mm -hmm. you know, 
like jeering kind of way. And, uh, and the mechanics just had me going back again and again to, to make perfect runs and, and shave, you know, fractions of a second of, you know, off my time. Just in terms of craft to animation and lighting, ambient, like, I think this yeah. is a great game. The music, I thought, was really good. The music Stealth, is spectacular. The Stealth Things yeah. music is really good. Yeah. Um, Guacamele, to me, is just next level good. Like, yep. like Guacamele, I think, deserve. See, this is another, we were talking about these genre issues. Like, yeah. I actually had to be convinced that Guacamele, I think rightfully so, was a platformer. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't really looking at it like that. Right. Because we, we, we compare this game a lot to, like, Super Metroid or Symphony of the Night. But you wouldn't say that those were platformers. Yet, a game like this actually does... Uh, emphasize its platforming much more the polarity and stuff like yes. that. Wall jumping, polarity, yeah. going right. yeah, going between the different platforms, getting to a high place, falling halfway, cursing like a sailor, yeah. playing yeah. it again. It's, there's a lot of there's a lot of beat em up into it, right? And there's a lot of fighting into it, but it's not I think it's definitely a platform. Yeah, Guacamelee was was awesome. But all these games, uh Sly Cooper is excellent. I think yeah. it's much better on PS3. Thomas was alone is, is right at home on Vita Tearaway too. Um, so good games there. Play the, all those games. Uh, let's skip down to PS Vita multi multiplayer game. Uh, the nominees were Killzone, Soul Sacrifice, Dive Kick, and Injustice. Killzone won. Uh, Killzone, I think, deserved to win mostly because it has uh, uh, maybe a, a more minor version of it, but a suite of options that could fit on a on a console, right. and really does kind of fulfill the console gaming on the go promise that Vita came with and has since mm -hmm. you know. Abandoned. Yeah, ranking up. I mean, different abilities to unlock. Like the fact that when I sat down and talked to one of my friends about it, who had been playing it forever since the beta, right? And he was just talking about all these different things I didn't even know you could do if you leveled up enough in that game. It's like, oh, wow, this is like, this isn't just throwaway Burning Skies multiplayer where you're just on a map with other people and you go and shoot oh, each other and it's skies. over, right? Like, it's something that is, like, we're talking about built from the ground up mm -hmm. and still being supported and doing all these different things. A real first person shooter multiplayer suite on the go. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Uh, I was very impressed with Killzone Mercenary. Um, I hope they get another crack at it, too. Uh, best, let's see, this is best graphics on Vita. Graphics. Killzone Mercenary, Dragon's Crown, Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, Muramasa Rebirth, and Tearaway. You can make a case, Killzone, by the way, is the winner. Right. But you can make a case for all of these games to win for very different reasons. Sure. Right. Uh, Tearaway's unique papercraft kind of look is beautiful. Muramasa, uh, in terms of visual I art, is, is gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> Sly Cooper looks great, same as the PS3 game. Dragon's Crown, obviously, that Vanillaware art, right. same as Muramasa. Mm -hmm. It's funny that two of their games were actually nominated. Um, and Killzone Mercenary, I voted for because it is running Killzone 3's engine. And that's really impressive. It doesn't look like Killzone 3. They had to tone it down. No, they had to make bit. concessions, yeah. obviously. But I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful, it's a, it, it looks like a console game. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's an amazing tech achievement. And again, you know, I didn't vote for it. I think, I think it would have been my second choice. I just yeah. really loved the way Muramasa looked. Um, especially on that OLED screen, my God, it looked so sexy. But yeah. um, again, it's like one of those things. I, I, one of the big debates there was, "Hey, Tearaway is so artistically beautiful," and but you know, again, like Killzone, that art uh, that art department had to do tough things, and there's something striking about Killzone's art style as well. It's not just like a, a gray shooter. You right. know, it's uh, it's got things that are visually striking about the way its characters des are designed, and the way its world is built. So just because this one looks more artsy doesn't mean that more art you know, ability right. went into good. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mercenary, I think, falls in between Killzone 3 and Shadowfall as, you know, like they're getting there. And it's a different team. It's it's a gorilla spin-off in, in England, but uh -huh. they're getting to that that color palette, that more vibrant look that Shadowfall sure. succeeded yeah. in, in achieving. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm with you 100% on that. Uh, but all beautiful games. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Best, yeah, and, and just, let me, let me just leave it on this. Like, I like that we had really good looking games on Vita this year because... I got I get really disappointed when a game like Valhalla Nights Three comes out or something that looks like, shit. you know, <laughs> yeah. like like it doesn't like it's just like inexcusably bad looking. Mm -hmm. Like Valhalla Nights Three is embarrassing looking, you know, and like the sea games. And it doesn't like, have to be. That's the no, thing. exactly. Like it doesn't, it doesn't do be. anything with the, with the hardware, you know, and like to see them just push the hardware like that. I appreciate that they're doing mm -hmm. that. I mean, it doesn't have to be intensive, like you know, like Dragon's Crown is not pushing the Vita. It's just beautiful, you know. Yeah. But Killzone is pushing the Vita, and it is beautiful. But games Vita like, can barely run Dragon's Crown at points. <laughs> well, yeah. online, right? Yeah. yeah well, no, even, slow sing down. Yeah, slow even single player. I mean, yeah. as long as you have, even when I had AI people in there with me, just even with me playing by myself or with AI companions, it goes... Which, yeah, as, gra which is as gorgeous as Dragon's Crown is, I still don't understand why, why we had those frame rate issues sometimes in, uh, in Dragon's Crown. It doesn't seem like something that would... I mean, the days of like large sprites being an issue for a, for, for a system are like... That's like NES, Super Nintendo days. Like we're not there anymore. Yeah, it's it is. It was a weird. Problem. So I'm not sure why. You know, maybe the memory's just that constrained. I I have no idea. I couldn't. 
it was weird because I had kill, I had uh, Dragon's Crown for like two months, two and a half months before it came out, and uh -huh. I was playing it only on PS3. And so when we got the Vita version, like right before it came out, I was really surprised by that. I was yeah, like, well, yeah. I didn't, I didn't expect that. That's why, I, I, that's why I say it's better on PS3. Um, the we have this category for Vita best sound, uh, Tearaway, Killzone Mercenary, East Memories of Celsida, and Soul Sacrifice. Tearaway won. I think I voted for Soul Sacrifice. For I this. don't think I voted in this uh, in this category. But Tearaway, I think, is a, is a worthy victor. It's got it's got uh, nice music, but I actually really like the the uh, the, the back, kind of the back and forth funny narrator in, in the game. I think is kind of interesting. I don't think Killzone does anything exceptional with music. I think Soul Sacrifice's story, while heavy handed and actually gets in the way of the game, is actually really awesome in terms of its voice acting and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, no, so, I thought the voice was I strong. I totally yeah. didn't agree. That was one of my first turnoffs to that game. When you're starting, you open up and you're in the cage, and the other guy's like, woo, I'm like, all right. Uh, that's what he did. <laughs> all right, mute this. You don't understand what he's saying. Right. saying. Uh, Ease uh, has awesome music. The voice acting is sparse. Um, so this was kind of an easy win, probably for Tearaway, actually. Best Vita story. Let's click on that. Let's do it. I'd click on that. Guacamole, Kills on Mercenary, and Soul Sacrifice were the only nominees. Uh -huh. um, I voted for Guacamole. I think that one. Yeah, Guacamole won. Um, I think you can make a case for all three of the games. Kills on Mercenary's yeah. story is not really that important. Soul I like Sacrifice. The I liked when I was going after the kid, right? Like the whatever the kid who was like the last heir yeah, and yeah. got killed. But that's all I remember. That's that's the story to me, right? <laughs> I was a mercenary and like there was a guy and a, and a kid. Died. That was the design of the game, though, was to not spin a story. Really, was to sure. like put yeah. you in and out. You didn't care about what was going on. Unit thirteen style. Yeah, yeah exactly. here are missions. Go do your thing. Exactly. Uh, Guacamole's story is really cool. It actually is kind of sad in the beginning. Your character dies in the yeah. beginning. Spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's when you're introduced to the game's polarity and stuff like that. But I don't think any of these necessarily have super strong stories. Right. I think Guacamelee's story is the most crafted and developed yeah, probably it's of funny. all of them. It's I think, funny. You know. Um, and then Soul Sacrifice, uh, I just liked that they tried. You know, like mm -hmm. the story did get in the way. The story was too much sometimes. Mm -hmm. But with all these Monster Hunter clones and these, and these kinds of games, at least they tried to do something different. Instead of just go like, go to this map and fight this creature and get this level and like get this item. And it's just like, well, they like, tried to put context into it. So I appreciated the effort, anyway. It's important, too, um, in a world that, that, that's that big, you know? Like, it's easier to get away with a, just a small or minimal story when the scope of what you're doing is kind of very small and limited. But when you're roaming around this huge 3D world, you know, hunting monsters or doing what, you know, it feels kind of, it feels a little bit strange to not have any kind of real motivation. So sure, I agree with sure. you. Like, it's, it's good that they tried, just maybe a little bit less intrusively would be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I want to, I'm so interested to see, like, I want them to do a real sequel, not Delta, but like a real sequel. Mm. Um, and I know, you know, KG and Funi told me, and you can find on IGN, that he wants to make it into a series. So we'll see how that happens. Uh, PS Vita, best game overall for Vita. This is a strong list. Guacamelee, Dragon's Crown, Killzone Mercenary, and Velocity Ultra. Yeah. I think a game's missing, actually, on here. Other nominees, we have Killzone Mercenary. We have Guacamelee as a nominee and a winner. There you go. So there's so a game missing So good, we nominated here. it twice. Yep. But Guacamelee won. Is Tearaway on there? Was that the Tearaway is the one missing that's missing. One? Yeah. Uh, Guacamelee won. I think Stealth Inc. was the one that was missing. <laughs> <laughs> Guacamelee is an extraordinary game. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I think works great on PS3, works great on Vita. Uh, but you can make a case, and I was really torn on this one, because I actually wanted to vote for Velocity. Yeah. Um, I did vote for for Velocity. Yeah, yeah Velocity. Throw it away. Velocity is an awesome game. Um, but you all these games... It. <laughs> Just like we were saying with the other, with the other, some of the other categories, though, this category represents a, a great diversity in Vita games. Because right. everyone not, not only says that Vita doesn't have games, but they also say that all the games are indie. Da, da, da. And some of these games <laughs> are indie, but Guacamelee is a, you know an action platformer, a, a non-linear game. Dragon's Crown is an action RPG. Uh, when did indie become a bad word anyway? No, well it has to some people, and that's just so frustrating and stupid. Tearaway is kind of like a, you know a, a, your old school kind of 3D platformer. Mm -hmm. Kills on Mercenary is a shooter. Blossy Ultra is a space shooter. So there's a lot of diversity, a lot of right. great, and you should play all five of those games. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And this goes into one of those things, too, that's a, that kind of becomes a little bit of a problem where people are like, oh, the Vita doesn't have games, the Vita doesn't have games. It only doesn't have games if you're only interested in, like, one or two genres. Granted, right. if, like, right, right, right. if all you want to play is role-playing games, like, sure, you only have a, you have a handful of good games to choose from, but maybe not tons and tons and tons. If you only play shooters, well, yeah, there's not a, there's not yeah. a whole lot of options. But I think the big th when people talk about the Vita not having games, I think what they're really saying is it doesn't have AAA franchises. You know there, what I mean? Like there's that. You talk about a PlayStation brand like Infamous, or there is an Uncharted, but how long? You know, it was long ago for many people and stuff like that. But like, if you're the kind of gamer who only buys five games a year and you're buying them based on the Call of Duty name or Battlefield name or right. Madden name, like I understand. There's that not enough of that. Like, 
Dragon's Crown, whatever. Sure. You know what I mean? Like you need. There's nothing familiar about the system. Yeah. Now, if you're a hardcore gamer, you, you you're watching these videos, you're listening to this podcast, you know already when somebody sits down, we talk about, oh well, this developer did this and they're doing that, and like, you know, you get all the connections to figure out that yeah. I'm gonna like whatever comes next from Drinkbox. Sure, absolutely. Um, now we can jump to PlayStation Four. All right, the big one, the new one. Our baby, our new baby. <laughs> so many games to choose from. Oh, this so one. many games. So many. <laughs> I was questioning whether we should even vote at all this year, but there are there are certain games for PS4 that you know. That, that deserves deserve to be recognized. Deserve, yes, exactly. So, yeah. best shooter is between Killzone, Shadowfall, Call of Duty Ghosts, and Battlefield 4. Uh, Killzone won, and I, I think rightfully so. I think people are being pretty harsh on Killzone for the sake of being harsh on Killzone because I think I that this I don't game... understand it, Colin. Like, I have a problem with it. Yeah. Like, when we were in the office, when, when you were playing it in the office and you were getting ready, you know, to for, for review, and some people were playing it and they were like, Oh my God! This is the, the worst intro thing is ever. the worst thing ever. It's like forty minutes until you have a gun, and I was just like, "Aren't you the same people who are tired of like shooters not telling stories and being all about yo, bro, go kill this thing?" Like, if you're, you're tired the same guy of that, who doesn't want action games to have anything but just freaking sure. <laughs> bleeding genres. I, I want to pull <laughs> this little tuft of white hairs so hard. Um, no, but it's like, I think it's just bullshit. You know, I really do. Like, honestly, it wasn't that long. It wasn't any worse written or better written than any other attempt at story in a Gears of War game or in a Halo yeah. game. Um, I, I feel like right on that, like, got off to that start and everyone already was like, nope, F this game. I hate it. I just thought it was really unfortunate. Because yeah. like, mechanically, it's hands down the best kill zone. Visually and artistically, it's hands down the best kill zone. Um, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, that's why I was so excited to review it because yeah. I've been really harsh on Killzone because I think Killzone's f-ing boring sometimes. You know, like especially compared to inf- uh, to, uh, to resistance. Um, resistance, right? Like, I always confused me like why one was like everyone <laughs> was like shit everyone talks like, about whatever. it and the other one is like, what's that game? It's like whatever. Yeah. yeah. But you know, kill, like Killzone two, I beat Killzone three, I beat you know Killzone Mercenary. You know, was fun and that, that was kind of the upswing. And when I finally got the Shadowfall, I'm like, well, they're 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 listening. Like Guerrilla Games is listening to yeah. you. You know, like. The game isn't gray and drab anymore. Like they're trying to like flesh out the story between the Vectans and the Hellgast. Like the the you know, I don't understand the hatred of this game. I think the multiplayer is actually pretty extraordinary. Um, and you know, yeah, people are kind of hating this game to hate this game. I understand it takes a long time, time to fire, and this game is is 20, 25 minutes, and like right. that's true. Like that's unfortunate. Maybe they could have done that a little bit better. Sure. But once you get your, your gun in your hands and you come out into that first open world map with the tree, like it's like it's a gorgeous. My game. jaw hit the floor. Like my jaw absolutely hit the floor. Like I'm gonna get a lot of I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. I play PC games. I love PC games. I've seen games running on a high end PC and all that. I'm sorry, but like once you get into that wide open area and that drop ship that 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 drop ship kind of like buzzes by and you're overlooking the forest and like the mountain ridge and like I was like I. I have not seen a PC game that looks that gorgeous. Like, I haven't seen one. Like, I've seen one that looks sharper because it's running at a higher resolution. I've seen one that's running at a higher frame rate, sure, or that maybe had textures that were on par with it. But I'm sorry, like, I've seen Crisis 3 running at the very highest, highest settings on a ridiculous rig. Yeah. It doesn't look as good to me as as that moment in right. Killzone Shadowfall. Gotta play Papers, Please, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, Papers, Please is... <laughs> you know what? That, that, that's a terrible, terrible <laughs> example. Like, Papers, Please is an it's example of everything that's... Terrible. I know, it's, I know. it's an Next. example of everything that's right about PC gaming, okay? <laughs> no, I'll, just, I'll just say this real quick. I think, like, Shadowfall might have exposed with some people, maybe just generally, like, a weakness in Killzone, that maybe it's time to let this series go. Mm. Uh, but I think it exposed a strength in Gorilla that they're evolving sure. and learning, and, like, they're working on something else now. Yeah. So, like, and they have been, so... This gets me excited for because their technical chops have been established for a long sure. time. Like they, they've always pushed, you know, their, their hardware mm-hmm. harder than any of the first party studios did, mm-hmm. has, for and sure. they're doing it again. So like, they have a lot to share with other studios that Sony owns, I think too. Um, and so I think you can you can read good things into that. Best PS4 multiplayer game. Uh, the nominees here were Assassin's Creed 4, Resogun, Call of Duty: Ghosts, Need for Speed Rivals, and Battlefield 4. How Killzone wasn't even nominated for this, I have no idea. Because uh, I would have voted for Killzone, uh, but Assassin's Creed won, um, and I know people love AC4's mm-hmm. uh, you know multiplayer. So tell me a little bit about how you guys feel about about that winning. Well, I, I uh, to my point that I made before about The Last of Us, I think I you know I also cited Assassin's Creed as another example of uh, multiplayer design that's really solving a lot of interesting problems and bringing a kind of a texture and a level of depth and nuance to multiplayer that your average just run around and you know Twitch based or action based. Uh, multiplayer doesn't have. So I'm perfectly happy 
uh, with that. I didn't get, I didn't dive that deeply into kill zones uh, multiplayer, although it seemed, More you know, yeah, it seemed very strong. Um, it's very but, nuanced. The yeah, ability to sure. go in and make your own and share them, I thought was always cool. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's just like, it takes it to another level, like that whole war zone thing to another level. Right. You can control anything about like the matches. It's unbelievable. When we were, when I was playing with it before it came out, like we were, you know, I was doing like one kill only, like, or like, yeah, like low regenerating health, this certain kind of pistol on this map with like all, it was just so cool. It was, yeah. it was so, like a lot of shooters don't let you do that because there's so back, much QA and bugging and right, debugging right. and stuff and that Back to Assassin's that. Creed, right? Like I think it's them iterating on this multiplayer suite they've been doing forever. You know, I sat down and played it at the event or whatever and I played it, I was like, oh, I immediately knew which one I was doing. Like, okay, you know, find this guy, find the little, make the thing get bluer and bluer until yeah. I find the guy I'm trying to kill or whatever. And so for me, that was a turn off to it of just like, I, I didn't, I don't like multiplayer in games to begin with, right. let alone in one that I've played. And I remember when I brought that up at game, the Game of the Year meeting, I was like, well, it's really just the same thing. And Mitch was like, it's totally different. Like, that mode's the same, but they've added this, that, and the other. I was like, okay, I get it. Right. What um, else was nominated there again? What was the... Let me go back. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, Resogun, Call of Duty Ghosts, right. Need for Speed Rivals, and Battlefield 4. Resogun, now, I'm not even sure. Th- right, this is, that, that's what I wanted to make a little note of. Now, remember I said before, like, Super Mario 3D World you know, was an example to me of a game. Yes, did it have multiplayer? Can you call it a multiplayer game because it has yeah. a multiplayer mode? Sure. But at the end of the day, the way I felt was that they just added more players to an experience that was already a lot of fun, that was already spectacular. And to me, that's what Resogun multiplayer is, right? It's just, it's an already spectacular game. And hey, look, now I can do it with another with a friend. So yeah, on some level, it gets inherently better and more entertaining, but that doesn't necessarily denote great multiplayer design. And that to me is what the multiplayer game of the year should be about. Right. Interesting. See, I always thought when people were giving Resogun more credit for multiplayer, I thought it was both the mode and then the fact of the leaderboards and how important to a game that is. The fact that when, this is one of the few games people come into the office and do the whole, hey, I beat your score last night. Oh my God, I posted this, blah, blah, blah. Don't even talk to me about that because no one's beating my score. And then, also, you're mean, nobody likes you. <laughs> but and then, here's a question, though. Is that multiplayer? Is, uh, hey, is, I'm, is, just, is, I'm are, just bringing are, this to a table. I'm one of the reasons I think as a package right. people actually voted for it to get it on the list. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, best PS4 graphics. I've actually, I think this one's obvious, but Killzone, Shadowfall, Knack, Resogun, and Battlefield 4. Killzone 1. Uh, Knack uh, is a beautiful game. It actually pushes the PS4 a lot harder than people give it credit for. Yeah, it does. Because um, that's why it kept freezing ears. Yeah, it froze the <laughs> mind. But like when the particle effects in that game are unbelievable. Yeah, the particle effects, the post-production. That like, would blow your PS3 up. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> 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 and it's one of those things where when you're looking at a streamed, when you're streaming a video, even when it's direct feed, and you're just watching a video of that game in action, you're like, this looks like a PS3 game. It's one of those things where in the next generation, so much of it is about post-processing, particle effects, lighting effects, shaders. Uh, these are things that you can't really discernibly notice when you're watching a heavily artifacted streaming video. But when it's in front of you, you get it. Yeah, and like yeah. Knack definitely kills it on that uh, on that level. Still not as much as you know Killzone does. But Killzone kills it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I think Resogun's a strong, you can make a, a, a pretty strong yes. case for Resogun yes. looking better than Killzone. That's another particle yeah. effect, right? Yeah. You blow stuff yeah. up and you see everything. But it's more, yeah, it's more the prowess of the technology yeah. Than, yeah. than how the game looks. Uh, best PS4 sound is the next category, and the nominees here are Resogun and Battlefield 4. That was it. That's all anyone nominated. Resogun 1. Resogun yeah. 1, yeah. Uh, music's awesome. The sound's awesome. Uh, I love the, the, the female voice that transcends all of House Mark's games. Yes. Um, so, and there's like a story to her, too, which is cool. Um, you know, because she's in everything. She's got they do. Yeah, that's what they were telling us, right? Um, and then best PS4 game overall. The nominees are Resogun, Assassin's Creed 4, NBA 2K14, and The Last of Us, Killzone, Shadowfall, <laughs> and Need for Speed Rivals. And the PlayStation <laughs> Now version of The Last of Us. The winner was Resogun. Is the best PlayStation 4 game. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I I'm so I often feel vindicated. Here we go. Everyone get ready. Get... Here, here's your soapbox. Yeah, yeah. Stand up on it, sir. Does I got ever come down. From <laughs> I got <laughs> so much <laughs> after games conference. For the people. record, I did not give you. I know. But no, I bought it. I was like, yep, I can see it. Like, especially at, like in comments on Twitter and everyone being like, this game looks like shit. No one cares about this game. This game's stupid. And then how many hundreds of tweets have I gotten from people being like, you were absolutely right. You were absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Resogun mm-hmm. is a phenomenal game. And it's going to be a hard game for Housemark to actually follow up. Yeah. Dead I don't know Nation how they're going to top Done. Uh, well, well, you weren't a big fan of the original Dead Nation. I said it was good. Revisionist <laughs> history. I said it was good. History. Revisionist history. Oh, yeah? What did you give it? 7.5. Good. That's horrible. Don't you know anything about video games? <laughs> 7.5 is failing. Uh, but but I just, you know, I was so proud that people got it. Because oh, I yeah. got it the first time I, I put my hands on the controller yeah. in Germany and all It's evident like, within... Awesome! It's evident within 30 seconds. And when I played it in Tokyo, at Tokyo Game Show, they had to like peel me away from the, the thing. They're like, other oh, people need to play. I'm like, this is so 
good. Don't you understand? Like, <laughs> like, cause they're they're talking about knack and kills, and I get it. But like, I'm like, this is the game. Yeah, yeah. That you guys should be like talking more about. This, this is the run. And yeah. why are you giving it away? I uh, know. <laughs> that was like the other question I was asking. Like, why are you giving this away? Because then you buy PlayStation Plus. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so Rezo Guns, best PS4 game. So that's everything. We went through everything. <laughs> Woo! Pretty impressive, yeah! doggies. Woo! PlayStation 3, Ow! PlayStation 4, PlayStation Vita. So Greg, we we decided that this was episode. 323. 323. Three, two, three. Right. No, no, it's 324. You're right. At the beginning, last, last we were, one was the palindrome. I made a point to say that. At the beginning, when we were talking about what number it was, I was just saying numbers. Okay. I'm just gonna throw that 324. 324. So that was Podcast Beyond episode 324. Yeah. Put a little bow on that sucker. Greg is usually your host. He'll be your host going forward. I just wanted to be the host today because we're on video and I thought it was special that I would be the host today. And you are special. Sure. Is it, is it oh, already? No, not at all. A little bit? No. Just a little bit. Yeah. How okay. about that? That hurt. And that? Uh, Vince, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I love we'll have back, back to the hole. <laughs> we'll have you back on soon. Goldfar will be on next week. We're going to do our y- yearly predictions podcast. Right, what's going to happen in 2014? Uh, I will make terrible predictions that will seem right on at the time. <laughs> and people will be very impressed with them. Like yeah. when I predicted that PS4 would be called PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, until then, uh, catch us on Twitter. I'm uh, No Taxation. Greg is Game Over Greggy. Vince, you're V. I'm Vin Cognito. Vin but Cog- the Nito. Change that. Yeah, the, the Nito is not spelled like my name. It's oh, spelled God. like the word Nito. Yeah, you gotta, so. you gotta do something about that. Uh, so until until next time, which camera am I looking at here? This one? That one. This one. This they, one. Mike is not them. on the ball. Look, look at all of them. This every, one. Every camera. Ah! Okay, I'm looking at that camera. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week in audio form and video form, but not this slickly produced because we can't use all those assets every week, Greg. Am I right? Right. We'll just have the one camera look with just the us for an hour to 80 minutes. We're all it needs, And though. they're moving the podcast room, so I don't, I don't even know. If Are they really? Need, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I'll tell you all about it. Oh, thank you. Uh, until next time, Beyond. Beyond! Users lose all sense of reality and enter another world. Remember, do not underestimate the power of PlayStation. PlayStation.